In a previous video, I briefly discussed the history of income inequality in America. And at the end, I showed this surprising graph. Trends in income inequality since 1995 look similar to trends in box office inequality over that same period. That is, in America, the share of income going to the top 10% of earners grew at the same rate as the share of box office revenues going to the top 10% of movies. Is this just some random coincidence, a spurious correlation? Or is there an economic theory that can explain the increase of both? There is, it's called the superstar effect. We can understand this economic theory as we look at Captain Marvel. Let's talk about the superstar effect. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we discuss the power of markets and economics to shape our world. Income inequality is an important topic and it's deeply connected to how markets function. Our understanding of income inequality trends comes from Thomas Piketty and a few other researchers. And they believe that the recent increase in income inequality is attributed mostly to tax policy. But changes in tax policy cannot explain why box office inequality has been rising at the same rate and at the same time as income inequality. Because box office revenues are not subject to the same taxes as income. So what's going on here? A good place to start is the superstar effect. In 1981, Sherwin Rosen published a paper on income inequality called The Economics of Superstars. He starts that paper talking about comedians and classical musicians. For most, their incomes are unremarkable. But for those at the very top, their incomes are extraordinary. Starting from this simple observation, he then builds his theory of income inequality, which he calls the superstar effect. And this paper just shows the beauty of economics, where we can take this simple model of where income inequality comes from and immediately see how relevant it is in the world around us. This theory has regularly come into my mind ever since I first heard about it almost 10 years ago. But it's so simple and powerful that I use it to interpret the world around me and I can't look at income inequality the same way. This theory can be broken down into the intersection of three parts. First, people produce things of different quality and we cannot perfectly substitute that quality. So take stand-up comedians as an example. I can get up there and I can do stand-up comedy, but the quality of my comedy act is not the same as the quality of Kevin Hart's comedy act, and these are not perfectly substitutable. Second, your income is related to the size of your market. Again, this is something that's easy to understand when we look at the stand-up comedy world. When you go down to the local bar at open mic night, that's a different income that you're going to get than if you were to perform in front of a full concert hall. Third, your access to quality products depends on technology. So, you know, 20, 30 years ago, if I had wanted to watch stand-up comedy, my best options would have been whatever was on cable or going down to the open mic night. Tonight, if I want to watch good stand-up quality, all I have to do is turn on Kevin Hart's Netflix special. And that point about Netflix shows us where income inequality is going to increase. Because as information communications technologies improve and advance, then that's going to give most people more access to high quality products. And if more people have access to high quality products, those products have higher market size and therefore they get more income. So in the stand-up comedy world, Kevin Hart in the 1980s might not have been making that much more than me. Kevin Hart in the age of Netflix makes far, far more than I make. Well, where does Captain Marvel come in? Well, do you remember that first trailer for Captain Marvel? In the opening scene, it shows Captain Marvel crashing into a blockbuster video. This scene is meant to establish the setting, right? An open blockbuster video puts us squarely in the 1990s. But the setting is really just one thing that we can learn from this scene. It really contains so many examples of superstar effects. The first superstar effect we should look at is in Blockbuster itself, and that's the VHS. VHS tapes exemplify the superstar effect. Because before VHS came out, if you saw a movie, you saw it in that theater and you never saw it again. So movie studios had one shot to try and make money off of this movie, and you had one shot to try and see the highest quality movie you could. So movie studios only had one shot to make money off of this movie. And you might not have even had a shot to see high quality movies. You were subject to whatever movies were being released in your theaters. Once VHS came out, all of a sudden movies took on a new life. You no longer had to just see them in the theater. You could watch them from your home. And it wasn't just the newest movies that you had to see. You could actually go back in time and you could take the best movies from the past and bring them to the present. 
Just as the superstar theory predicts, this little invention caused income inequality among movie studios to spike as the highest quality movies gained a much larger audience. So the next time you see VHS, because you know, you see those all the time, but the next time you see one, remember that it is an example of the superstar effect. But we're not done there because there's another example of the superstar effect, and that is Blockbuster itself. Now for this example of the superstar effect, we need to think beyond just quality in terms of what the product is, and let's think about quality in terms of how well you can use that technology. So just to fix ideas for these upcoming examples, let's go back to stand-up comedy. Imagine you have two stand-up comedians who are exactly equal in the quality of comedy that they deliver. Then YouTube comes along and one of these comedians understands how to deliver comedy via YouTube whereas the other is used to just doing on stage. Well with that access to YouTube this comedian is going to have far greater market access than the one that's limited to stages and therefore he is going to get the benefit of a superstar effect. So the superstar effect doesn't have to rely just on the quality of the product that you're delivering. It also depends on how well you can leverage the new technologies. And this is where we get back to Blockbuster because Blockbuster understood how to leverage technology to create the biggest video rental company in America. Blockbuster Video was a national chain that in the beginning was competing with local mom and pop video rental stores. The advantage of a national chain is that you get good data to project demand and therefore you have a good idea of what you need to have in your store. Because Blockbuster could efficiently project demand, it was able to stock its shelves with the videos that people were most likely to rent, increasing its profits. Whereas local mom and pop stores didn't always have the videos that consumers wanted. And so Blockbuster was able to leverage that technology to get them to a bigger market size and make tons and tons of profit off of the video rental industry. Our third superstar effect is why these directors chose this scene. Because an open blockbuster meant that this is in the 1990s. Because later on, another superstar comes and supplants blockbuster, Netflix. Netflix is another example of a superstar that used advances in technology to increase its market size. Its first use of advances in technology was the DVD, right? Netflix realized that DVDs could be mailed fairly cheaply. This would never have been possible under a VHS. But once that conversion to DVDs occurred, you could pretty cheaply mail these things around the entire United States. And now you were location independent. You did not need to have brick and mortar stores to service customers. You could service anybody who had a mailbox. So your potential market all of a sudden blew up. And of course, once Netflix went to streaming, you didn't even need a mailbox to get access to these movies. You just needed a computer and it could be in your home, at the library, in a coffee shop. You could be wherever you needed to be and you could have those movies available to you. Again, the market vastly expanded once Netflix leveraged these changes in technology to get a bigger market. The fourth and final superstar effect that we care about is Captain Marvel itself, this movie. The movie Captain Marvel is projected to make 140 to 160 million dollars its opening weekend. If that's true, Captain Marvel would immediately launch into the top 20 opening weekends of all time. Does Captain Marvel fit the superstar effect? Yeah, it has a huge market. That's where all this income is coming from, so that's easy to explain. It is a high quality product. It's coming from a studio that has produced one of the most successful film franchises in history. Brie Larson, who plays Captain Marvel, has won an Oscar for Best Actress. Samuel L. Jackson, who is a supporting actor, has won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Jude Law, who is another supporting actor, has not won an Oscar, but has been nominated for Best Supporting Actor. So this movie is drawing on top talent to produce a high quality movie. And even if you are somebody who snubs the Marvel films and thinks that this is just for the commoners, that's the point. This is a quality film for the most people available, right? So that quality is attached to the market size. So that's four superstar effects that we can see just in this one scene. So it's easy to see how recent technological advancements have created high incomes for the best quality movies and low incomes for the lowest quality movies. The superstar effect is definitely operating through the movie market. And that's why we've seen this increase in box office inequality since the 1990s. But does the superstar effect also apply to the labor market, to income inequality? Yes, it absolutely does. Since the 1980s, we've seen technological advancements that have given firms access to larger and larger markets. Think of some of the top firms today. You have Apple, 
Amazon, Google, and Facebook. These are the highest quality products in their market. And I know you're going to debate about it, but it's not hard to see that they are dominating their respective markets. There are other e-commerce sites, and yet Amazon is the one we think of. Because of technological advancements, the highest quality firms can supply the entire world, right? We only need a few of these firms to supply the world. And because of that, their market is huge and therefore they get huge incomes. And because the firms get huge incomes, the workers at those firms also get huge incomes. So income for those at the very top are increasing, while those in similar markets, their income is decreasing. And it's not just the big firms. We can look at the individual level. 20 years ago, PewDiePie probably would have lived an unremarkable life. Not many people would have known of him. But PewDiePie, like Netflix, knows how to use that technology to get to a bigger market. And because of that, he is the largest YouTuber on YouTube, at least for now. And because he's the largest YouTuber, he has one of the largest incomes. Income for those YouTubers who are the very best is increasing, whereas most of the world cannot use that YouTube technology to get to that larger market. Now, just a disclaimer, I do not think the superstar effect explains 100% of the increase in income inequality over the last 20 to 30 years. But I think it's a good place to start, and it's something that we need to be thinking about. Now, Piketty and his fellow researchers are going to object and say if the superstar effect was really explaining rises in income inequality, we would also see it in France. I think this is a fair objection, but I don't think it completely explains away the superstar effect. Because I don't think it's implausible to think that the top Americans are doing a better job at capturing the global market than the top French. As an example, English YouTube channels have much farther reach than French YouTube channels, which is not to say there aren't some top French YouTubers, it's just that there are more top American YouTubers. What are some examples of the superstar effect that you have seen? Go ahead and comment below and tell me some of your favorite examples of the superstar effect and what you're doing to become a superstar. Thanks for watching Market Power today. Please subscribe so that way you can be updated on new videos related to economics in the world. Also, go over to my Twitter page. There's a link in the description below where you can find out more updates on what's going on in economics and when new videos are coming out. Thanks and we'll see you on the next one.